Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. We have been talking about model initial specification and we talked about the different problems, different sources of model initial specification problem, but we need to have some tests to identify if there is a model initial specification problem and one such test is perhaps a reset test or omitted variable bias test. So let's try to understand what this test is talking about. Before I actually get into that, let me actually conceptually explain what are the different problems that may happen when we have, let's say, some sort of omitted variable. Let's say I have this plot here. Not the grid x and y coordinate, but let's say y is here and x is here. Okay, and let's say my x is and y actual distribution is something like this. Okay, something like this but I actually end up fitting let's say I have ended up fitting some sort of linear model let's say this is a very simple model so where I write y is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x plus some u okay now it's a linear model and I just fit the linear model and I get something like perhaps something like this but that is clearly not the best fit. Uh, the best fit perhaps would be something like if I have something like this. So that would be a better fit. But the linear equation is not able to sort of capture this sort of pattern, this sort of ups and downs that we have in, in my actual fit, actual line that I should have. So perhaps it's a better idea if we have some sort of quadratic equation. Let's say I, if I have, let's say y is equal to some sort of beta 1 plus beta 2x plus let's say beta 2x square uh, beta 3x square then let's say some beta 4 beta 4x cube and so forth and then then we have some sort of error term you can have a you know, power of 4 x can have a power of 4 and so forth now this is something that we can have for a simple OLS but let's say when we when we have a, when we have many many different independent variables not just x1 but there are x2 x3 and x4 and so so and so on so if we have such kind of situation then if my y actually if I feed a linear regression as y is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x1 or x2 let's say beta 3 x3 and let's say I have a beta 4 x4 and up to I don't know like let's say n variable beta n xn plus some air term if this is my actual linear equation now then if I have such kind of pattern such kind of non-linearity existing in the model so then this model is definitely not be able to capture the nonlinear pattern because essentially this is a linear model. Now, if I want to include this nonlinearity, what I can do is I can actually include, let's say, beta 1 plus beta 2 x2, and I'm not writing so many different terms, beta 3 x3 x3, and then beta n xn. And then I actually do a square of the whole thing let's say beta 2 x2 square so I basically take square of the uh, exploratory variables and this is beta 2 prime I, I have a different coefficient here beta 3 prime x3 square and so on and then I will have let's say beta n uh, beta uh, then I'll have the beta 2 cube x2 cube plus beta 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 3 cube x3 cube and so forth so basically what I have done I have simply taken a square term of all these different explanatory variables now it may not just end here I can have an I can have further terms which are essentially interaction terms. So I will have x2, x3, x3, x4, and so forth. So I can have like, I can add more terms. I can add more terms instead of writing one, the equations one more time. I can basically add here, let's say, beta 2 double prime, x2, x3, 
then beta 3 double prime x3 x4 x3 x4 and so on and so on so this way i can have i can have a sort of many many different terms uh, in terms of the higher order uh, higher order terms as well as the interaction terms so essentially if i want to have that that would be really a daunting sort of expression and more importantly with so many different independent variables my degrees of freedom will be you know sort of you know um, will get reduced so i don't want that so instead of that what ramsey proposed what ramsey proposed is that instead of having the square terms or the cube terms what if we can simply let me just note it here so instead of having this square terms or the cube terms or the interse intersection terms here what if we can simply have something like something like y is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 plus whatever beta in xn you have and then you add to that you add to that y hat so estimated y square you basically instead of squaring so many different terms you simply square the estimated you first estimate the y and then you take a square of that and then you have some sort of any sort of you know gamma let's say we take a gamma okay or gamma 1 or gamma 2 whatever you want to take and then you can also have if you want to have a cube terms you can also have gamma 3 and let's say y hat cube okay so the beauty of taking the square or cube terms is that let me use a different page uh, the beauty of using this square or cube term is that so essentially the y hat square would actually take into account so let's say I, my original equation was beta 1 beta 2 x2 and up to beta in xn so if i take a square of y hat y hat then i will get square of all these different terms as well as the intersection of this term so like i will have beta 1 square beta 2 square x square and and the intersection terms and the intersection terms so 2 beta 1 beta 2 x1 x2 essentially ideally i am basically capturing that so because of this i really uh, it's really convenient to actually estimate the y hat first and once i estimate the y hat i can use the y hat as a regressor so it becomes an independent variable estimated y okay and once i i can take a square of it i can take a cube of it i can take a fourth power of it so all these different uh, power of y hat could be used as a as an independent regressor now in fact when you do ramsey reset test uh, usually we take up to uh, the, with the original equation we actually take uh, power up to four so essentially my y let me write down the final equation that we will be using for ramsey reset test is y is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x2 up to beta in xn beta in xn plus gamma 2 y hat square plus gamma 3 y hat cube plus gamma 4 y hat to the power 4 so that is what we are going to use in my regression equation when i am going to do the reset test so i did why we do why we actually take the squares and what what is the whole point here that we have done so far we have explained that the importance of having the higher order independent variable and the the importance of having the inter uh, sort of intersection terms but one thing we have to remember that ramsey's ramsey's reset test can at best tell you can at best tell you if there are problems of if if there are problems of there are problems of of model misspecification but it will not be able to tell you it will not be able to tell you which exact variable you need to include or which exact variable you need to you know sort of the what power of that variable you need to include so that the Ramsey reset test will not be able to tell you 
it can only tell you that well there is a problem you need to perhaps include higher order uh, terms of the independent variable so it is essentially it is not very specific in terms of telling you which variables to include all right so with this we will actually see what are the different steps that we need to do here so one we understood that first we get the y hat first we get the y hat and then we take the y hat square y hat cube y hat to the power 4 and then you run the and run the regression final regression with equation this let's say this is my equation star regress the equation star okay regression with equation star now what exactly happens here when we do that so essentially in Ramsa reset test what it does is, is it calculates the f statistic and the first model where i do not have any of these higher order y hat terms so this is my restricted model so we remember how to get how to use restricted and un unrestricted model to get the f statistic so we essentially have for the restricted model we have residual sum of square restricted and then you have the second model which is unrestricted model where we have included all these different terms so you take the residual sum of squared rss unrestricted and then you divide that by the degrees of freedom which is essentially if you have if you have m number of independent variables in your model including the intercept so you would do m minus 1 whereas in the denominator you would just take the residual sum of square for the unrestricted model and you divide it by if there are total n number of observations then n minus now i have in this case i will have a different number of explanatory variable because i'm including these terms this uh different terms uh, square cube and to the power 4 and so that is why you have to sort of uh, use to calculate the f statistic f statistic when we sort of try to uh, understand which model is better okay and my degree uh, my uh, high, null hypothesis in this case is going to be so all this gamma so that the gammas that I have written here gamma 2 gamma 3 gamma 4 so they are going to be zero. So my null hypothesis, my null hypothesis is that gamma two is equal to gamma three is equal to gamma four, whichever gamma I take, that is, is equal to zero. So if I take only let's say y y hat square and not the higher order term, so in that case I'll only have gamma two is equal to zero. So if my gammas are zero, so then the y the higher order y hat terms will not have any significant contribution towards explaining the model and which is good for me because that means that my model that I have actually written at the beginning is correctly specified but if we have uh, these higher order terms which are uh, if they are significant so that means uh, we actually need to incorporate the higher order higher order terms higher order variables essentially or the quadratic or, or the square of intersection terms so all these different aspects we need to consider and so my null, if my alternative hypothesis is going to be gamma i is equal, not is equal to zero. So if any of the gammas are, you know, not equal to zero, so then uh, I will say my null hypothesis is rejected. Okay, so that's basically the idea and the theory uh, behind uh, estimating the Brahms reset test. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to um, actually see using the data that we have already used previously. Uh, the Ramsey reset test. So let me actually let me actually show you the data. So exactly the same data we have used previously. That is the National Sample Survey data for the state of Bengal. So what we are going to do, we will actually run the code here, and we will see what is the what is the result of the Ramsey reset test. And here, let me actually go back to the code. So let me actually run this equation let's say my equation is this so log of wage total general education experience 
and let's say I also had six and then it is for a specific group of people so print active status is between 21 and 51 so if I run this regression so I've already defined all those variables I'm not doing it again so if I run this regression I get the result I get is here so I see that the R squared value is 0.46 and all these variables are actually explaining the model pretty nicely general education experience and sex now we know that for mean serian equation we already have an experience square which we need to actually take into account which I haven't done here in this particular case so what I will do is let me actually do a omitted variable bias test okay so I will simply write a command that is ov test it's a rather simple command just omitted variable bias test if I write ov test so it will give me the results and I have already run it and let's see what result I got interesting so we see that ov test actually gives you a result Ramsey reset test the same thing ov test command is actually used for Ramsey reset test and it says that using powers of the fitted values of the log of which total okay and h naught is model has no omitted variable so it means that gamma 2 gamma 3 gamma 4 they're zero and essentially uh, in case of omitted variable bias test as i said uh, we use up to a fourth power of the y hat variable okay so essentially In this case, my F statistic has a value of 164.67 and the P value is pretty less. So it means that my null hypothesis is rejected and I say that there is a possibility of, you know, a presence of higher order of the Y hat. So essentially that, that essentially says that my model has some omitted variable bias problem. Now, going forward we can also think that in in the previous equation what i had is that i actually did not include the experience square term so that is one term i know for for a fact that i need to include experience squared so let's say if we include experience squared what happens so i'll just include i'll just run the equation including the experience square let me Right now, I have written some other equations, so let's just not get into that. So let me just write down this, and I will include experience squared. And uh, following that, I'll again run the OV test command so as to see if my omitted variable problem is solved or not. So I have run the regression, and then I'll run the OV test. Now, let us look at the results. Well, what I see here is this. I see that the if statistics still so let me actually see the that the regression has already actually has happened and I see that we have all this uh, exp independent variables general education experience experience square six and all the variables are actually significant my model has dark squared values improved now when I look at the OV test result what I see is that uh, my F statistic has a rather large value of 139.05 for a given degrees of freedom and the p-value is low and is zero essentially so it means that my model my model has you know like there is still uh, you know have omitted variable bias problem even if I have included the experience square term so essentially we have to work further to improve the model